Hi guys, welcome back to the Drone Files. In this video, I have an interesting product to review. And it is a new product by a new brand called DLFPV. This brand has been around for about one or two years and they've been producing mainly uh, full-size FPV racers, the ones that are 250 millimeters. And the model here, the product here is the DL1060, which is the company's first micro FPV racer featuring brush motors. The 1060 is available in a few kits. Uh, I believe there are four or five kits. And uh, the one here comes with the FPV monitor, the drone, the camera, and the transmitter. And this kit costs $100. At a glance, the 1060 actually looks like any other micro racer out there. But there is a difference between this one and the other racers out there because uh, the 1060 was designed specifically for beginners. Now if you've been shopping for a micro FPV racer, you would have come across a few options available. Uh, these racers are usually available in FreeSky, DSM or other radio protocols. For a experienced RC pilot, this may not seem intimidating or confusing, but for a beginner it is confusing and a bit of a steep learning curve. So if you're shopping for a micro FPV racer, you would have to choose which radio protocol you want to use and uh, select your radio transmitter and select which uh, receiver you would want to use. So most beginners, I believe, uh, find that a bit confusing. So with that in mind, DL FPV has come up with a new product, uh, the 1060 here. With the 1060, you don't have to worry about which radio protocol to choose. Uh, all you need to do is just buy this kit and you're ready to fly. So let's begin with the transmitter for the 1060. Um, this is one of the... I'm actually quite impressed with the transmitter design. It feels very comfortable, it looks very ergonomic, and uh, it's, this is probably one of the best transmitter designs that I've had. I've seen for a toy drone or something that costs less than $100. It does not have any rubber coating but it's actually very comfortable in the hand. I feel that the size is just right and the buttons are all well placed and well positioned. Uh, the only th issue I have is that uh, I wish that some of these buttons would have labels. So in case you forget which what it does, you can actually look at the label and refresh your memory. Uh, the sticks are also removable. So if you don't like these sticks, for example, you can change to a thumbstick. So overall, uh, this is quite an impressive transmitter for a drone that costs just $100. It also comes with its own uh, removable phone clip. Uh, I mean, sorry, this is a monitor clip. And this kit comes with the 5.8G monitor with its own antenna. And the antenna is removable, so if you need something that is better performing, you can remove this antenna and install your own antenna of choice. So the monitor does not have its own sunshade, although there are slots at the side for a sunshade. Um, I believe the reason why they did not provide a sunshade is because the when you install it on the clip, the top part of the monitor is covered, so you can't really put a sunshade unless you come up with your own custom design. So let's have a look at the drone. Okay, the 1060 appears like any other micro FPV racer. It has a three blade propeller and the battery sits at the bottom here which is a two pin connector and there's a plastic canopy and the um, all-in-one FPV camera sits at the top here with a uh, attached to a nylon bracket and this bracket is actually quite flexible which means if you crash or anything like that it will absorb the impact and prevent impact from directly hitting the camera which is a good design uh, I, however, I find that this bracket is a bit flimsy and it tends to uh, get out of alignment easily. Also, you can uh, tilt the camera angle like this. And I noticed that uh, if you hit a wall or something, if you crash hard, the camera angle can change. So it's a bit flimsy on that aspect. 
Uh, overall, it's a pretty ordinary uh, looking micro FPV racer. Uh, the camera also has channel buttons uh, available at these two holes here. You can go up and down, but you need a small pin to actually press these uh, buttons. The uh, antenna is a uh, omnidirectional antenna. This antenna is probably more durable than a uh, leaf because it will flex and not break when you crash it. So overall, um, this is uh, quite a neat drone. These uh, built-in prop guards are actually very useful if you're flying indoors. Uh, quite often I hit the wall or uh, some hard object and uh, the drone won't really crash because uh, these built-in prop guards actually protect the propellers. So what really sets apart the 1060 from other micro FPV racers? The uh, 1060 actually has three preset flight modes. The first one is called um, stability. The second one is medium and high. And uh, everything on this drone is uh, preset, you, meaning you can't uh, plug in, plug this in via a USB cable to your computer and uh, configure the flight controller. Everything is preset. The in interesting feature of the 1060 is the stability mode, which uh, has a kind of altitude hole that is not really an altitude hole feature because it does not have uh, a barometer or air pressure sensor. And I've contacted the FPV about this and they've confirmed that it does not have a barometer. But what it has is a very interesting way of keeping the uh, drone stable in the air. Now, if you're not familiar with altitude hole, it is a feature that was introduced to make drones easy to hover. Um, before altitude hole was introduced, we had only manual throttle control of drones. So what happens is uh, when you push the throttle down to zero, the propellers will stop spinning. And when you push it up to uh, the top, it will spin at maximum power. And uh, with this type of manual control, many beginners found it difficult to hover their drones because um, they tend to uh, overcorrect or undercorrect their throttle control, which means the drone will be bobbing up and down or oscillating up and down. And sometimes it will cause crashes or it will cause the drone to just fly up too, too quickly. So the main problem that many beginners have is uh, the ability to uh, hover the drone. With that in mind, altitude hole was introduced and it is a feature that makes use of a barometer in the drone itself. The barometer tells the flight controller the air pressure. So um, if the air pressure is high, the drone will, the uh, flight controller will know that the drone is at a low altitude. And if the air pressure is low, the uh, flight controller will know that it is uh, the drone is flying at a high altitude. So what happens is uh, with altitude hole, the, the flight controller will try to maintain its altitude by maintaining the same air pressure readings. And it does this by decreasing or increasing the uh, propulsion or the speed of the propellers accordingly to maintain that air pressure. So if it detects that the drone is uh, dropping down slowly or descending, it will increase the propulsion power. And if it detects that the air pressure is going down and getting lower, it will uh, decrease the propulsion so that the drone will drop a little bit. Um, Altitude hole is useful for beginners because uh, the, all the guesswork about maintaining the throttle control using the manual method is eliminated. Uh, with altitude hole, the transmitter, uh, the controls, throttle control stick is usually centered in at 50% via a spring. So what happens is if you release the throttle, uh, the, the throttle will just stay at 50% and the drone will just maintain its altitude at a fixed altitude where you left it at. So uh, this is a useful feature for beginners, but it does have its drawbacks. One of its drawbacks is that uh, altitude holders get confused when there is wind, strong wind currents blowing against the drone. It tends to result in a flight performance that is a bit choppy or erratic and causes the drone to a bit uh, oscillate a little bit. So if you're flying through very tight spaces, tight corridors or through tight doors, this can be a bit tricky because the drone can tend to uh, do m very subtle corrections to its uh, f uh, altitude which causes it to go up a little bit or down a little bit and it, this can cause the drone to crash.
crash. Uh, this is the main reason why FPV pilots mainly do not fly with altitude hold, especially if they are flying through tight spaces. They would normally use uh, manual throttle, throttle control. Now, with the so-called altitude hold feature on the 1060, the throttle still behaves like a normal altitude hold drone, meaning if you push it down to zero, it does not shut off the motors, and if you push it up to the top, it does not unleash the maximum power. The only difference between this and the normal altitude hold drones is that the 1060 does not have a barometer, so it does not attempt to correct, uh, auto-correct itself. So the flight controller does not try to uh, give automatic input to the motors. And this results in a more precise flight performance. Um, uh, it is a lot more precise when you're flying indoors through tight spaces and all that because the flight controller does not auto-correct itself, which is great, uh, which is a brilliant approach, uh, which makes me wonder why toy drone makers did not think about this feature much earlier. Instead, they use the barometer method. And uh, yeah, so that's the only difference the, between this altitude hole and the one that you have in other drones. Actually, the word altitude hole is a bit misleading uh, since the drone does not attempt to maintain as uh, constant air pressure. It will ho uh, ho drift up and down if you do not control the throttle properly. Uh, but due to the uh, subdued throttle control, throttle performance here, it does not overcorrect. You you are you will not be able to overcorrect or undercorrect the drone. So this results in a smoother flight. Another good thing about the 1060 is the uh, all-in-one FPV camera, which uh, has a rather good performance for a toy drone that costs just one hundred dollars. It's certainly a lot better than the cheap. Uh, 2 megapixel Wi-Fi FPV cameras that you normally get with drones that cost about $50 to $70. And this is the same type of camera that you'd get at big uh, for bigger FPV racers. And the, the monitor is also quite impressive. So let me demonstrate how the camera performs. So all you need to do is just plug in the battery and the camera will start broadcasting And as you can see, the uh, performance of the monitor is quite good. Color saturation is good, contrast is good. And um, over here you have two buttons where you can control the channel up and down. And you even have a uh, mode for brightness and contrast. At the moment it's uh, 50%. It even has a built-in timer, so the moment you turn on the monitor, it will give you a timer countdown. Uh, I mean, a timer was the timer will start immediately. So this gives you a good idea how much battery is left when you're flying. The uh, 1060 has about uh, five minutes of flight time, so if you're seeing about four minutes or four and a half minutes, it's about time to land. So here is a sample flight video from the 1060. I'm starting off with stabilized mode. And as you can see here, I'm flying through rather tight spaces and uh, it's not that hard in stabilized mode because uh, the throttle control is so easy to handle. Uh, with this uh, stabilized mode, even a uh, beginner pilot can actually feel like a pro flying through tight spaces because uh, it makes your control so much easier and so much more precise compared to manual throttle control or uh, conventional altitude hole. As you can see, I've knocked into the table and uh, the wall and the, the 1060 is still staying upright. It's still flying in the air because of the prop guards. It prevents the drone from crashing even when you hit a wall. And it's really a lot of fun to fly when you're in stabilized mode because you can go through very tight spaces, you can go really close to walls and all that. So I'm recording directly from the uh, FPV monitor because uh, my my only FPV goggle that has a video recorder ha has got damaged, so I couldn't record from the headset. And uh, 
And it's also a good way to show you what the uh, image quality on the monitor looks like. And here again, I hit the curtain and still the drone is flying. So now I'm switching to a uh, medium mode. Okay, now I'm in medium mode and uh, I'm going to perform a flip. There it goes. And another flip. And as you can see, the uh, throttle control becomes a bit harder when I'm in uh, medium mode or high. And I'm currently flying in medium mode in with manual throttle control. And as you can see, it's a bit harder. The drone is a bit bobbing up and down. Although it's still not impossible to fly through tight spaces uh, with manual throttle, but it's uh, significantly harder than in stabilized mode, which is the uh, special thing about the 1060 because this stabilized mode is really what makes it special compared to other altitude hold drones. So now I'm back in uh, I'm back in uh, stabilized mode. And you can really push the throttle. You can really fly. Look at how close it was to the table. You can really fly fast with stabilized mode. You can really uh, push the sticks and uh, don't worry too much about hitting something or losing control. So now I'm in uh, medium mode and back and stabilize again. Sorry, I'm in medium mode now and I'm going to do a flip. Yeah, correct. So another flip. So I'm in back and stabilize mode again. And I'm going to fly into my tight small room just to show how easy it is to pilot. So this room is very small and uh, as you can see I can precisely maneuver the uh, 1060 in here without even crashing into the wall. So yeah, overall the, uh, the stabilized mode is really what makes this drone so much fun to fly. In fact, I, I I fly it regularly indoors and it's really one of the best indoor flyers for micro FPV races that I've tested. So now I'm trying to, uh, I'm going to land this drone on the table. So that's it for the test flight. So as you've seen in the two videos earlier, the DL1060 is actually a very good micro FPV racer. Uh, it actually makes FPV flying a lot easier for beginners, especially the stability mode and the unique method in which throttle control is implemented. Um, for anyone who wants an easy introduction into FPV racing, I strongly recommend this drone. For just $100, you get this kit which includes the FPV monitor and everything you need to fly. And this is certainly a much better deal than uh, other cheap toy drones that cost about $70 or $50 that feature Wi-Fi FPV. 5.8G uh, FPV is definitely a lot more superior than the Wi-Fi versions. So yeah, if you want a nice introduction into FPV racing, do check out the 1060. I hope I've covered everything you need to know about this drone in this review. If you've liked the video, please like my channel and uh, subscribe to it. So till the next video and review, I'll see you again. Goodbye.